Well, I am happy that Karapka didn't have to sit around and think that uh, all the troop members were dead for that long. All in all, a very cool episode setting the stage for the next one. Hunter Hunter, episode 54. Fortunes aren't right. <laughs> I love it. Too. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim here to bring you another review on the awesome and tantalizing and foretelling of the future tale of Hunter Hunter. Now, the last episode, for me, was a dramatic turn of events where all of a sudden this happened, that happened, this happened. I, I predicted and expected none of it, uh, but really the end result was, uh, of course, the Phantom Troop getting away with everything that they, uh, seemingly getting away with everything that they had plotted and planned out, the Mafia Dons being killed, Karapka just being very, very upset and sorrowful that she did not uh, get a chance to obviously kill uh, Krolo or any of the other Phantom Troop members, and um, and really I think that it's just that he had so much hatred uh, that that's all he knows now. So now he feels like he doesn't have that, so he doesn't know what he has, you know. But anyway, the episode ended off on a very somber, sourful note. Uh, Gone and Killua uh, hanging out with Leorio and uh, and Zapil, and and that was really about all. But uh, again, just it was cool, but you know, and magical. But at the same time, it was like, what the hell? I did not see that coming at all. But I think that's what makes it so magical. Um, so things left off like that, and uh, and they wind up picking up, and actually in the first, I don't know, maybe three, four minutes of it, the first thing you see before the intro even comes up is Krolo and the gang hanging out in their rundown building that they call headquarters or base. And now listen, I'm not trying to be a dick over here, but when you got billions and billions of, 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 of Jenny, right, and all these stolen items and everything else, and I get it that they're not from York New City, and I get it that they gotta lay low and everything like that, but can't you bring some fucking blow-up mattresses or something? Can't somebody go find an old couch or whatever? They're all sitting around, like Pakunoda is sitting there, right, with her, with her mini skirt and her tits hanging out, and she's just sitting there on the cold, hard concrete, right? <laughs> and just, like, legs kicked out, leaning up against a crate, you know? And it's just like, really? And Krolo, whenever you see him, he's just sort of sitting around brooding, you know? And Hisoka, he's always just perched up somewhere, just flipping his cards around, you know? Dude, there's only 52 cards in the deck, okay? Anyway, that's the only thing that I've got going on here that I can say that's, uh, that we could even be construed as negative. And really, it's just more of a, are you serious? You guys you guys came here, you've been here for days now, right? And, and when you're not attacking and killing and everything else and doing all the things that the Phantom Troop does, <laughs> you're just sitting on the floor of a warehouse or on a piece of broken concrete amongst candles and stuff, you know? Anyway, I think they could have came up with better digs. Somebody could have brought sleeping bags. Uh, I mean, seriously, couldn't she? Couldn't you see Ahsoka just getting all cuddly with everybody? Hmm, how are you? <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, so this episode, though, the the first portion of it, I, I guess you would say, is really it's uh, yeah, Killua and Gone are uh, are just kind of pigging out, having a little. Um, it, it actually looks funny because it's called York New City, which obviously is a, is a play on uh, Reverse New York, and uh, and they're sitting in an area that looks seemingly like Central Park, and um, and they're having uh, they're just having kind of like a, an eating contest, and Krabka shows up, right? So they're they're all excited to uh, to see him. And, uh, and ultimately, they wind up going back and uh, and being reunited, of course, with Leorio. And the four of them haven't been together now since the end of the Hunter exam, you know. So, uh, well, I'm sorry, uh, since the, the Zoldic family arc. That was actually the last time that they were at, but right around the end of the Hunter exam, the 24th, 25th episode. So, th basically, what happens is, in that first portion, is, is that Karabka sits down and uh, tells him that, because uh, they want to ask, they're, they're going and kill are asking, of course, about the Nen. And he explains the powers, but explains that his chain is useless because of uh, what he wound up, you know, obviously the condition that he wound up putting on it, there is a Nen dagger, you know, aimed at his heart, and if he uses it for anything other than to do the, He basically said it was it was something that was, it's a power that was born of fury and rage, and it really was something that probably you should have thought through a little bit better, because once the troop members are gone, now... You know, I guess you can't. I, I, I'm understand as I understand. I guess you can't just like rescind that and be like, hey, let's let's come up with a different thing other than these Nen chains. Um, anyway, there's there's a lot to to be explained in there that I'm not quite. You know, I'm a little foggy on. But the bottom line is, is that um, you know they're all talking about, uh, of course, the Phantom Troop members that are still around because they're still under the impression that half of them have been killed along with their leader. And, uh, and Karapka goes and, and winds up making the decision that he's still going to go after uh, looking after the, for the Scarlet Eyes of, of his, uh, you know, for obviously for his clan, for the Kurtuk, right? So that's, uh, that you know, and, and, and it kind of against Killua's, um, against what Killua wants, Killua actually wants 
uh, to go and, and attack the Phantom Troop members or take out the ones they can because he's very wary of uh, obviously Nobunaga coming after him and, and going and of course looking for the chain user now being we know is Karapka. Uh, they know now is Karapka. And then of course uh, Pekinoda, uh, who can read the minds and whatnot. Killua is especially scared thinking like, okay, well, if she reads our minds again, now she knows that we're connected and he knows damn well they're not strong enough to take out the troop members. So anyway, what winds up happening though is during this whole conversation, which I thought was kind of neat, is that Hisoka winds up sending a text uh, to Karapka. And the text says, the bodies were fakes, right? So the, the bodies were fake, you know? So Karabka's like overjoyed, but like pissed at the same time. But now he has something again. Because like I said at the beginning of this review, Karabka has put so much effort behind, and I've done this before too, you put so much energy into hating or, or whatever, or, you know, this vengeance that you want to have upon somebody that really, uh, once that is gone, you have nothing left. There's nothing left of you. You don't know what is fun, what you can do outside of that anymore because that's all you've been focused on 110% of the time for as long as you can remember. Uh, so really the second half of the episode, and although this one moved a little bit slower in the sense that there wasn't a lot of action, uh, we find out that Krollo was able to uh, to, to, to steal uh, Neon Nostrad's uh, power, her ghostwriting power. And I don't know how that exactly happens. I don't know if he was able to do it while she had it out. And that's how he... I wasn't really paying attention because I thought maybe he did pull out a book. I can't remember that exact conversation at the restaurant and how it worked out. But anyway, the bottom line is he has, he has it, right? Uh, so he has that ability. We find out because he tells everybody, listen, we're going to pack it up and leave tonight. And Nobunaga's pissed. He's like, we still have we still have unfinished business. We have to avenge Uvo's death, right? And, uh, you know, Uvo's... And, and, and catch, obviously, his killer, the chain user. So, Krolo goes... And, and it's actually pretty cool, because Franklin tells Nobunaga, you know, you better just shut up, man. The boss gave an order. And, like, Nobunaga's like, did he? Did he really give the order? I'm talking directly to him, you know? So, he says, is that your order, boss? So, Krolo goes and comes down, and I'm thinking he's going to come and make an example of Nobunaga and just tear him in half or some shit. But he comes down... And that's when we find out he has the, the neon neon's ghostwriting ability. He tells Nobunaga's fortune, or reads it, uh, you know, writes it down, or whatever, and uh, and does it for for a few of the other troop members. And uh, and it winds up being uh, they wind up kind of deciphering through things that uh, that Shellnark, um, uh, Shellnark, Nobunaga, of course, um, uh, Shizuku, and uh, and Pekinoda will all wind up dying in the next week because these fortunes i thought when i said it a couple of chapters or a couple episodes ago that it was only it was supposed to be verses for the next month but it's actually verses that are things are going to happen over the next week and uh and shizuku winds up figuring out very quickly that that she's like i only have two verses whereas everybody else that wasn't going to die had four or five and as they put everything together about the months in the calendar the legs and the spider when i uh i misinterpreted about the half limbs thing the half limbs, the spider losing half of its limbs, it, it really referred to, uh, I thought it was Krollo that he was going to get his arms cut off or something like that, but it actually means each limb of the spider. So it was actually referring to uh, the half of the members being, you know, being uh, killed or whatever over the next week. So that's what the, the fortune was. And uh, Hisoka winds up jumping down and saying, hey, uh, why don't you read everybody's fortune so we can get a better idea of what the hell's going on over here. Uh, we go back to Gon and Killua, Karapka and Leorio, and uh, and Karapka gets a call uh, from Melody saying that the Ten Dons themselves have ordered, you know, basically the uh, assassination of the rest of the troop members, the kind of manhunt for them uh, th has ordered it off, right? And we all know the reason because the troop <laughs> obviously had uh, had a Lumi kill the Ten Dons, so uh, it was very cool stuff. Um, but really just, you know, it kind of led up to uh, getting a description of this meteor city where the troop are supposed to be from. And this meteor city that they're from uh, is basically this burnout, desolate kind of wasteland that started out as this garbage dump. Eventually people started living there. And, uh, and really it's where you can go to acquire people like the Mafia does all the time that kind of have no background, no history, no name type of thing. They're kind of off the books, off the chart, you know. So they're, they're, they're you know, th that sort of thing. So... Um, but really what winds up happening, though, is we go back to the troop, and everybody has uh, had their fortunes read, and uh, Hisoka reads his, and it basically just straight up says, like, you're going to team up with the Scarlet Eyes, or you're going to, like, sell, you're going to sell out, like, members of the calendar or whatever, you know, meaning the troop, and uh, and they're going to lose half their members, blah, 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 you know. Uh, Pekinota comes over, you know, and kind of sticks her tits in his face, and even though Hisoka doesn't really care, um, but and she's like, let me see it, and he's like, oh, I don't know, you know, I don't, you're not gonna like it. So she takes it anyway, and then runs over like the, like a little, like a little bitch, runs over by the rest of the troop and goes, oh, look, look what Hisoka says, it says that this, says that. 
the when Nobunaga reads it, right, it, it actually some of the verses are different and are changed a little bit, and even the narrator says that at the end. So I'm assuming that Hisoka maybe had something to do with that. Um, but basically, it still winds up pretty much pointing the finger at him as kind of being like this sellout or this turncoat or somebody who would betray them, right? Uh, but it also it really tells of what Hisoka wants to do, which is be able to have that one-on-one -on -one battle with Krolo and everything else, and then of course the team up with Karapka, which is so already kind of started up, you know. Um, but very, very cool stuff, because at the end, then Nobunaga's like, did you sell, Ahsoka, did you sell out Uvo? And he does this cool move where, like, the, like Ahsoka's in the background, and, he, and then you see the sword, and he just whoosh, goes to pull it out, and you're like, oh, man, it's about to go down. So I don't know if these two are going to fight or what, but that's how the episode ends off. A very, very cool one. And like I said, uh, very neat to see that Korapka didn't have to suffer too long, because all he had at this point is hatred for, for you know, obviously for the Phantom Troop. And, you know... And he's going to have to eventually figure out how to replace that hatred with other things in his life. But the bottom line is, is that it was nice to see that he was actually told the truth by Hisoka, that they were fakes and everything. That kind of has his purpose again, you know. So, Because I was thinking that they were just going to end off the damn arc after the last episode. I was like, what the hell? This is crap, you know. Um, a lot of unexpected things that happened. So my episode question for you, though, brothers and sisters, is what fights are you most looking forward to? Uh, do you think Hisoka is going to fight off, face off against Krolo? Uh, Hisoka against Nobunaga, which looks like an impending uh, one. I don't know that he's going to wind up fighting him right now. He's going to probably find a way to wheeze a lot of it because he's not going to take him, Krolo, and ten other troop members at once. Um, but, you know, what, what, what face-offs are you looking at or hoping to see in the future? Um, you know, and of course, if you, if you know already, uh, you know, try not to spoil it for me if you don't mind. I'd appreciate that. So leave your answers to that question in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching you in the next fun nation. Remember to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and even my other channels.